This happened when I was in my early 20s. I was working in a retail store in a mall, but there wasn't enough hours, so I asked if there was anything else I could do, and my boss told me that the location at another mall needed more help so I could go there on my weekend. I decided to take the bus route that was a bit longer, but that I didn't have to make any transfers. So I got up early and got the earliest one I could. The bus ride was fairly normal. I got to see parts of my city I hadn't seen before. I did notice that the bus eventually went into a more dodgy neighborhood. There was more trash everywhere. Abandoned buildings, houses, and cars. I noticed it, but I felt like I was safely on the bus and my destination was in a nice neighborhood. At some point, an elderly lady got on the bus, and I noticed that no one was getting up to offer her a seat. So I gave her mine, and went to go hold the pole next to the side door of the bus, and continued on my way. While riding, I remember looking at the guy next to me, and asking if he knew about how much longer it would take to get to my bus stop. But before he answered, someone hit the buzzer to get off, the doors next to me opened, and then I felt hands on my free arm, grabbing me and pulling me. I, on reflex, immediately clenched up, because I generally don't like any physical contact with strangers outside of a greeting handshake. And I really think that reflex saved my life, because it took my brain a few seconds to register that someone was trying to pull me off the bus. A tall man in a white tank top, blue jeans, and white tennis shoes, had come from the back of the bus, grabbed my arm, and tried to drag me off the bus. He had pulled me down to the second step before I even understood what was going on, and I was just barely holding on to the pole. The arm he was grabbing had my purse on it, and I actually tried to shake my purse down to him, so he let go, but he had no interest in my purse. I had just about started calling for help when I felt someone grab my waist and pull me back up towards the bus. The man trying to pull me down must have realized that he couldn't get me without dragging this out longer than he expected. So he finally gave up and ran off. And that was it. The guy ran off, the door shut, and I vaguely remember hearing the man who saved me saying something along the lines of, you would die in that neighborhood. And I had apparently gone into some kind of shock because I only remember saying, oh, I don't even remember thanking him. I didn't say anything to the driver. I didn't contact the police like I should have. I don't even remember my shift at the other location. I don't remember the ride home. It was like I was numb. It was when I was at home, I had completely showered and gotten ready for my bed in my nightgown, that I sat at the edge of my bed and thought, did I almost get kidnapped? I almost got kidnapped. I have a lot of regrets about all of this. I regret not contacting the police in case the guy goes after another woman. At least women would be aware that he was out there and I regret not thanking and keeping in contact with that nice person who saved me. I actually put up an article in my local Craigslist in hopes of him somehow hearing it and knowing how grateful I am to him. Well anyway, to the guy who tried to take me off the bus, let's not meet and I hope you get caught. This happened when I was around 11 or 12 years old, and I was finally on summer break. Me and my best friend, whom I met on the internet, made plans for me to stay at her place for a week. She lived in a city about two and a half hours away from me, but I have met her in real life, so everything was fine. On that day, I took the train by myself, which was not a new experience for me since my mom let me have a lot of freedom and experience. I texted my friend the time and place I'd arrive, but that city was huge, so I got the name of the station mixed up, which led to her going somewhere else, instead of where I was. But at that time, I obviously didn't know. So when I arrived, I just took my suitcase and went to a quiet corner to wait for her, while watching all the busy people running from A to B. My friend texted me, asking me where I was, and after some more messages, we figured out that it was my fault for telling her the wrong station, but she was on the way to pick me up. After waiting for a few minutes, 
a man in his 30s accidentally bumped into me even though I was just standing still and apologized a thousand times. I assured him it was fine and nothing happened but he insisted on making it up to me and wanted to buy me a hot chocolate or something to eat. I refused but I was also a pretty shy girl back then and wasn't taken too serious many times. He seemed pretty frustrated at this point and he decided to grab my hand and try to drag me with him and only then I realized what his intentions were and I felt so scared. No one else around me seemed to notice what was going on but like a miracle my friend just arrived on time and came straight to me. I was calling her name which made the guy realize I wasn't alone anymore so he took off as fast as he could without saying anything. So, let's not meet again, creep from the train station. A little backstory. I was about 16 at the time, and I rode the public bus to and from school. This particular day, I had done some special effects makeup before the end of my classes, so I had fake blood running down my face, and I couldn't be bothered to take it off before leaving school. Now I knew I was boarding my bus, people would stare or ask questions, so I wasn't surprised when this man, who looked to be in his mid-thirties, started asking about the makeup. The conversation was normal at first, just the usual, oh wow, did you do that yourself kind of stuff. I answered the question as I normally would and expected the conversation to be done and over with. Boy, was I wrong. This man, he mentioned his name was Joe, started steering the conversation into strange territory, asking me if I had a boyfriend, to which I lied and said I did. He then proceeded to ask if my boyfriend liked the makeup and if I was on my way to see him now. I again lied and said he likes the makeup and yes, I was going to see him, trying to get Joe to believe someone was expecting me. The conversation died down for a bit until he said this. You know, you remind me a lot of my sister, he said with a grin. I just smiled in response, not really knowing what to say. After not hearing anything from me, Joe continued. My sister was kind of a bitch. She was always lying about me to our parents. I had fantasies about breaking her jaw. Now at this point I was terrified. My bus stop was still another 20 minutes away and I just wanted to be out of that situation. Seeing that what he said to me made me uncomfortable, he switched the subject, telling me about where he worked and what he does there. I just nodded along to what he was saying, remaining silent the entire time. Close to my bus stop, he says to me, why don't you come to my house? I have a freezer full of pizza and ice cream. We can hang out for a while. To which I politely declined, saying my boyfriend was expecting me. Finally, I get to my bus stop and quickly get off the bus, speed walking all the way home, all the while calling a friend to inform them of what just happened. Things were fine for a bit after that. I switched my bus route so I wouldn't run into him again, but one afternoon, I had to go to a store that was on my old route. I was nervous about getting on that bus again, but was happy when I didn't see Joe. I did my shopping, and as I was leaving the store, I saw Joe, standing out by the doors, staring at me. The second I was out of the doors, he walked over to me, a grin on his face. He wrapped his arms around me, I pulled away from him, telling him I was very busy and I had to go. He then asked, well what are you doing? I have time so I can tag along. I was very persistent, saying I really couldn't. I had to go. And I walked away, heading into a neighboring store that I knew would be busy. Sure enough, Joe followed. I ignored him as I made my way down a heavily populated makeup aisle, keeping my attention on some cheap lipstick in the hopes he'd get the hint and leave me alone. I was wrong. Joe reached over my shoulder grabbing a red lipstick as he leaned in close and whispered, This color would look gorgeous on you. I can't wait to see you wearing it. He then placed the lipstick in my basket and walked away, leaving the store. 
but I remained in the store for about 20 minutes after he left, afraid to leave and make the walk home. After I mustered up the courage, I put the lipstick back, put away the basket, and called a friend to stay on the line with me until I made it home. Now I don't know if he followed me home or not, but I can say that after that day, the motion detector porch light started coming on at night, and I started hearing knocks at my bedroom window. Thankfully, I moved shortly after and haven't seen Joe since. So, to the creeper on the bus, let's not meet again. I'm a very small, weak woman. Five foot six and 118 pounds. I'm a university student who lives with my mom. I take my city subway system to and from school, and I've never had any problems with it before. On Mondays and Wednesdays, I have a class that ends at 7.15 p.m. I've never been concerned about it, because the route from my classroom to the train station goes through a segment of downtown that is filled with high-class hotels, so it's very well lit, and there's always police around. Not to mention that a lot of my classmates also ride the train and take the same route. But yesterday, I had to go to the bathroom after class, so by the time I got to the train station, all of my classmates had already left on their own trains. Part of me thinks that if I had just held it, my night would have gone so much better. I got to the train station and sat down on a bench to wait. I have these huge over-ear Bluetooth headphones that are kind of an accessory. At the time I was using them as earmuffs, I didn't have any music playing. But these are quality headphones, so outside sound is still pretty muffled, even with them turned off. So I was sitting there with my headphones on, playing Pokemon on my 3DS, with a bald man at the other end of the bench. Some guy walks up and wants to sit between us, so I scoot over without being asked, because that's just what you do. New guy starts talking to bald guy. I can't hear what they're saying due to the headphones. The new guy turns and gives me a friendly pat on the back, and then says something to me. I pulled my headphones off one ear because I thought he wanted something. This guy just kind of babbles at me. I couldn't really understand what he was saying because I don't hear very well in the first place. It's not enough to need hearing aids, but enough that I talk loudly, and a normal speaking voice sounds quiet to me. My standard thing for when this happens is to ask them to repeat themselves or just kind of smile and nod, which is what I did. Then he finally speaks up more and asks my name. Then he puts his hand out for a handshake. I say my name and go to shake his hand. Instead of shaking it, he pulls it up and kisses the back. That was when I knew things weren't right. He then starts asking me about myself, first about how old I am, then if I drink alcohol, then about my game and the progress Nintendo has made since putting it out. He goes on about alcohol for a while, asking how much I drink, and talking about how much he drinks. The whole time he's sitting so close, and leaning over me, speaking very fast, and in something between a mumble and a normal speaking voice. I was really uncomfortable, and over this guy's head, I was giving panic looks at bald guy. I know he saw those looks. He would meet my eyes and then look away. The creepy guy asks me more stuff about what train stop I go to and where I live, which I avoid answering. He mentions that he needs to get off one stop after Uptown Station, which is the station I need to get off at. For context, we were at Downtown Station. I live along the train line, and you can see my condo from Uptown Station, quite literally. It's at the end of the road that Uptown Station is on, in a T formation. Between Downtown Station and Uptown Station, there are about five other stations. My train comes and I quickly go, well, this is my train, bye sir. And I get the hell away from him and onto the train. I remember fervently hoping he wouldn't follow me. He didn't follow at first, so I didn't think he would be getting on the train. So I sat down in a completely empty seat and put my bag on the seat next to me. If I'd have known that he would be getting on the train, I would have sat down next to one of the women on there and pretended that I knew her. The creepy guy got on right before the train left 
Before he did, bald guy, who had sat down in front of me, smiled at me and said, Don't worry, he's a weirdo, but he's harmless. I cannot tell you how angry I am at this man. The creepy guy may have been harmless to him, but I was terrified and looked to him for help multiple times throughout the train ride. And this bald guy would look me in the eye, acknowledge my fear, and then look away and make conversation with other men on the train. I hope he trips and falls face first into a cactus. Now, this next part, I don't really have an explanation for. I know that this was dumb, but it's like I froze up and my southern bred manners kicked in. Creepy guy got onto the train and started looking around for me. I froze and thought, oh shit. He spotted me, walked up to me, and said, can I sit next to you? I wanted to say no so badly, but I couldn't speak, and my body just went into autopilot and moved my bag off the seat and onto my lap. I was trapped between him and the wall of the train. His entire body was just pressed up against me. There wasn't an inch of him that wasn't pressed up against my side. I was just kind of frozen, facing straight forward and staring at my game. When he talked, he did it with our cheeks only an inch apart. He started mumbling and chattering at me again. I could barely understand him. He asked about my game again, then got into weirder topics. He asked me if I listened to rap music, then congratulated me at saying no. He asked if I had a boyfriend, if I had a girlfriend. He asked if I lived alone where I lived, to which I lied obviously. As we got closer and closer to my stop, I got more and more scared. I was so scared he was going to follow me home. It's a straight shot from the station to my condo. You literally can't miss it. I was giving panic eyes to everyone in there. Men, women, out the window, anyone who would look at me. They all looked away, and creepy guy saw me give the looks multiple times. It's just kind of confirmation to me that he had bad intentions. If a normal, albeit weird guy, who was trying to make conversation with a girl and saw her making panic eyes to people, they would realize something was up and that they were being creepy. But this guy just didn't give a damn. I don't know how I can properly express how terrified I was, guys. It all looks so clinical and factual, written down. But this felt like life and death to me. Meanwhile, my stop was coming up, and I was still panicked. My stop comes, and I stand up. He had his legs up, so I couldn't get out. I very forcefully said, Sir, this is my stop. I need to go. And he scrambles up and out of my way. A billion more papers, a folded up notebook, and an unopened condom packet fell out of his pocket. I get to the door. The train comes to a stop and my fears are proven true. He gathers up all of his stuff and follows me out. Remember, he said the stop he needed was the stop after mine. I managed to text one-handed in my pocket and send, help, man follow, uptown station, to my mom. She doesn't reply. I managed to turn on my headphones and connect them to my phone. Again, one-handed in my pocket, and I call her. She doesn't reply. I'm nearly hyperventilating. I try to move fast enough to lose this guy, since he's dropping his collection of stuff everywhere, but he gets himself organized and catches up to me before I reach the escalators. I've been continually calling my mom this whole time. The creepy guy follows me up the escalator and out the gates. At this point, I stop. There was no way in hell I was going to go home and show this guy where I lived. He asked me which way I was going to next. I sort of lied and said I was waiting for my mom to come pick me up. He said that he would wait with me. I tried to convince him that it would be okay for him to leave, and he insisted on staying. At this point, I pulled my phone out and was calling my mom publicly. He leans in super close and goes, Oh, Penny Smith. I know her. Good looking lady, good looking lady. And starts going off about how he knows my mom. And how pretty and nice she is. Which is absolute bullshit. I give up on calling my mom. He gives me the paper he'd been writing on. It had, 
assuming it was real, his full name, email address, and two phone numbers. He kept saying to call him if I wanted a job. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Then he pulls out another paper and pen and hands it to me. He asks for my full name, email, and phone number. I gave him a fake number and handed it back. He said, no, your full name too. I told him, oh no, I'm sorry sir, my mama wouldn't be very happy if I gave that out. He starts trying to convince me that it would be okay. At this point, I panic and shove the paper with the fake number at him and say, I'm sorry sir, I have to go and I just run away, down the stairs to the street. My mom finally calls me back, her phone had been on silent. I was terrified and kept looking behind me to see if he was following me because he started to when I started to run. My mom leaves the condo and runs toward the station and we met in the middle. I've never been so relieved to see my mom. She brought me home and kept an eye out over our shoulders for the guy. I still have the paper with his supposed full name and contact info. I just feel like I need to share this story because I'm scared. I had to still use those stations and I was terrified he would still be there. I was in fight or flight the whole walk to the station. I'm still scared I'm going to encounter him again. I'm still on campus. I'm going to have to go back to those stations and I'm so anxious that I'll be there. Me and most of my friends would rely on public transportation to get ourselves to school. This happened in our sophomore year. Our high school was placed smack dab in the middle of a city around some colleges. I had a friend who would go home with me every day and we both used the subway. Living in a populated area, I was aware of the potential creeps and dangerous people. It was around 5pm during winter time and it was quickly getting dark. After our club was finished, me and my friend would begin our journey to the subway station. This included walking through a college campus and many streets. It was usually less than the 15 minute walk to the station, so we would just talk and mind our business and things surrounding us. Halfway through our walk, I had a feeling that someone was behind us, which wasn't surprising since it could have been other students, and this was a heavily populated place. Me and my friend were slow walkers, so I was basically waiting for this person to pass us, like most others would. Although, I waited for a long time and still felt this person on our tail. When we got to a crosswalk, they were still behind us, so quickly and slightly, I turned around to take a peek at them. My heart started beating faster when I glanced at them. At first, I thought they were wearing a ski mask. But I was mistaken. They wore a black beanie and a black scarf tightly wrapped around their mouth and nose. He was about 50 years old or older and had a dark green windbreaker on along with black baggy pants. What irked me a little bit was how close he was to me and my friend now. He was just less than 5 feet away and I was terrified that I was going to accidentally smack him with my Jansport backpack which I've always stuffed with textbooks and whatnot. Me and my friend crossed the road, and as we continued to walk, I became more and more weary. He was a lot closer now than before, and he wore heavy Timberland boots that would crush and pound against the salt on the snow. As a girl, I've always felt insecure about my body, and it was justified for me and my friend, since all this man could see was the back of both of us. Most likely, eyeing our bodies. Just to note, both of us were 14 years old and super passive, so confronting this person was the last thing I wanted to do. I saw that my friend would glance at her phone every now and then and go on it to respond to texts, so I ended up texting her. Man behind us, creepy, it's been 10 minutes. She replies, I noticed, I don't know what to do. Since we were on a college campus, there were often large tours given by people and crowds of tourists. We began walking at a faster pace and I heard his footsteps quicken as well. I leaned in 
and whispered to her to walk through the crowd and take an immediate ride on a different path that we'd never taken to the station. It just leads to a different gate, exiting the college, and outside of the gate, we'd be about 50 feet away from the subway station. So we did exactly that, and walked through a crowd of 40 to 50 tourists, all by a popular statue. Afterwards, we were speed walking by this point, and I looked behind me to check if he was still behind us. And luckily he wasn't. We proceeded to walk down the stairs toward the station, still shaken by what happened. We paid to get through the gates, and then we got on the platform of the train that would take us home. There was a certain exit that I liked to take at the station that I would get off to go home, so we walked further towards the left side of the platform with more benches. We found an empty bench somehow amidst the large crowd at the platform. It was a Friday after all, and almost 6 p.m., I sat on the right, and my friend sat on the left. Not even 30 seconds after we sat down, I felt a presence standing right next to me at the bench. It was him. I saw the Timberlands. Not only that, he was just facing me, heavily breathing, and most likely staring down entirely. As I saw his shoes pointed at me, and baggy black pants stuffed within his boots, I was terrified and nudged my friend as she was on her phone. She was still holding her phone, but froze and didn't continue to click on anything. Just as we were in our frozen trance, the announcement started to play, stating that the train was arriving. We both shot up as the train began to come, and I took her arm, proceeding to lead her to the right side of the platform and through the crowd. We stood in front of the doors on the train along with many others. I looked to my right, and there he was, in front of another train door to our right. Each train cart came with three pairs of doors that would automatically open and close. We chose the middle door, and thought it was odd he was at the right door instead of following us in. Then I thought that he would probably isolate himself and follow us off the train car at our stop. I looked up at the train board to see another train was going to come in two minutes. As the train doors opened, people began to spill out. We waited for everyone to shuffle out, and the group at his door had already shuffled out, so he was clearly in the train car already. I still held my friend's arm, and I made us go in last. Standing in front of the doors, there were less people on the train, but all of the seats were taken or there were one or two empty per row. I could see him on the right side of the car, staring at us as he stood by a metal pole. The train would make a warning noise that would be about three beeps. This indicated that the doors would close. These beeps were half seconds. At the first beep, I yanked me and my friend out of the train and back onto the platform. The doors quickly closed, and I sighed in relief. The train started moving within five seconds, but within those five seconds, horrifyingly enough, the man sprinted up to the closed doors, which had two transparent windows, and stared down at me and my friend. We backed up immediately. He still had the beanie and scarf on, but all I could see were his menacing eyes. Then he proceeded to bang on the glass, making us both jump, but it was shortly cut off as the train car was pulling away. Still looking at him banging on the glass, the train moved into the tunnel. My friend fell to the floor and started crying. There weren't many people on the platform, since everyone boarded the train. I began to console her and tear up as well. We were both young and oblivious to everything. I helped her up and we got on the next train and sat down. Blankly staring out of the windows across from us, which showed the dark subway tunnels in motion. Afterwards, we were near our homes and parted ways. We never told anyone about this, although we should have, thinking back to it all. I met up with the same friend a couple of days ago, and we were reminded of this event. Overall, I'm glad that we were both safe and out of harm's way in that moment. But I just felt so stupid, knowing that I could have gotten someone's attention since we were near big crowds, or possibly a security guard. So, 
man who followed me and my friend from our high school to the subway platform. Let's not meet again. Hey guys, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you thought of the stories, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Turn on notifications so you're always kept up to date with my latest videos. I'd also like to thank my patrons, Syntax Flux, James Gorgano, Gemma Allum, Helena Renee, Monica Lavalais, Alex, and Courtney Maxwell. So if you guys want to check out any of the perks on Patreon, the link's in the description. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.